Hey everyone, welcome to our World Plone Day se session. Um, so I am Sally Kleinfeld. I'm here with Riku Pekka, whose last name I can never pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the head of the Plone marketing team and I, I help out with that team. And we thought we would give you a little overview of what's been going on with Plone.org, a little history, a little next steps. Um, so so Plone.org, it's been... Yeah sort of the heart and soul of the open source Plone project since the very beginning days, which was 2002. Um, so Rick Pekka, why don't you give us uh, a brief history of, uh, of the website? Yeah, sure. So yeah, before we look in the future and, and the future Plone.org, it's, it's good to look at the history of it. And, and here I have, uh, here I actually have, if I go, a little ways back, if you stay with me, I have a couple of screenshots from the Plone One since 2002. So we are already celebrating the 20th year of Plone and uh, and Plone.org at the same time. And uh, here is how it looked in the beginning. So, and uh, I don't know, I wasn't uh, around quite then, <laughs> but uh, I came to Plone in 2004 maybe, so I don't remember this site, but uh, what about you, when did you? Uh, yeah, came around to 2002, I think, was my first encounter with Plone, and yeah, yeah, this these old sites look pretty familiar. I mean, it, it was using yeah. Plone out of the box back in the early days and did for many years, as you'll see walking through this uh, little yeah. series of screenshots. We. Needless to say, we uh, we raided the Internet Archives, the Wayback Machine, to find these screenshots. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Here's uh, Plone 2 from maybe 2005, still looking kind of same, same uh, showing the content structure of the site and, and stuff like that. And so uh, it's actually fun uh, to uh, notice that this, uh, uh, like some of this design is used later in Wikipedia. So. This was kind of always aiming for easy, easy to use kind of things. Yeah, we were really the first in that sort of content collaboration community space, which is how I found Plone, Googling that very con combination. And hey, yeah. everybody, get a load of that old logo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's there. It's not that blue, but it's lighter. And then <laughs> yeah. there's Plone 3. It's still... Uh, kind of looks the same, but uh, maybe a little less cluttered. There's less stuff on this page, but maybe maybe this site just uh, needs login, in, login, and this kind of I don't know product catalog page or something like that. So, uh, but uh, out of the box, Plone Three from 2008, nine, something like that, maybe, and. And what we, yeah, here's the front page. It's, yeah, what is blown, get blown, learn blown, get involved. And probably we are going towards something like that in the <laughs> new versions also. So straight to the point. And here's, here's a fun fact, World Plone Day from 2008. I didn't notice this before. So we are <laughs> celebrating World Plone Day 22. Uh, and and this is from 2008, so it's, uh, it's a long long tradition. Uh, give, giving out plone stuff uh, around the world. Yep. And then we have a couple of other plone plone.net site at some point, and here's plone four. Explain, why don't you explain what plone.net was? Um, or I can explain if you don't remember. It was a yeah, it was yeah, a, please do. It was a site for vendors. So um, back in the day, Plone.org was always the site for the Plone Foundation, the Plone Project, the Plone Community. But of course, there were always vendors who did Plone work, and so there was a upswelling of opinion that they should have their own site and there should be a way mm. to search for vendors. And that's what Plone.net was uh, for a while. I, I can't remember when it ended but it was up for yeah. a while yeah. it was it was one of those who's going to run the site and who's going to take care of it and eventually that didn't happen mm -hmm. <laughs> so it sort of yeah. Withered away. yeah all right and then we go to 2009 
and plone four and and now we can see a little bit uh, like a different design here i don't think yeah. this was out of the box blown i think this is well slightly, it's pretty slightly... much with a with a big banner image so there was a customized front page oh, yeah. and everything else was mm -hmm. pretty out of the box and you know with the new logo plone yeah. Plone four and four three were real mainstays uh for plone for a long time so we were all very yeah. excited about that yeah and <clears throat> yeah, that's it. P plone for speed, power, and beauty, and I think we are still aiming for that yep. power stuff. But uh, let's see. Uh, all right, now we get to the current blonde dork, uh, and it was uh, renewed in uh, was it 2016? 16, yeah. Plone five, yeah. Yeah, and that uh, was a big, a big, uh, a big effort. And uh, whereas the, all the previous versions that you saw were pretty much just upgrade in place, upgrade in place, upgrade in place, yeah. all the way. For this one, there was actually a pretty major change to a Diazo theme uh, and all the Plone Five stuff, uh, yeah. and that was a dump and load uh, project uh, to bring the old content over to the new site. Yeah. And uh, it was and is uh, uh, oriented towards the community and developers since uh, at the same time there was Plone.com site, which was more of a marketing oriented site. Yeah, that essentially replaced Plone.net, uh, mm. but there was, a, there was a gap. I don't remember when Plone.net sort of lost traction, but there was an upswelling of opinion around 2014, 15, I think it mm. was. Uh, to get a to get again a more vendor oriented a more marketing oriented site and that was the thrust of uh, plone.com was to not have all the community you know discussions and the technical details and the, uh, that sort of thing but yeah for yeah. for decision makers <clears throat> but again yeah. that site proved you know it's a lot of work maintaining a community site and if you're maintaining two or three community sites Mm. It uh, can be more work than you can manage. So, so plone.com yeah. again, sort of uh, stopped getting updates, and instead we have been incorporating the plone.com content into plone.org over the last year. Mm. Yeah, that's true. And here we have the current plone.org. But um... yeah, so the current site dates to that Plone 5 upgrade and redesign mm. effort, that big effort in 2016. And that's been just kind of cruising along with nothing really more than, you know, adding content, editing content, but but minor version upgrades since then. So mm. um, I was hoping you'd talk a little bit about why it might be time for a, a big renewal effort now. Yeah. I'll... I'll uh get to that from these slides so yeah there are some problems with the current site as as you mentioned and uh, maybe the most important thing is uh, it doesn't represent what plone is today so we are already using plone 6 alpha versions and uh, plone 6 technologies for some years and plone 6 is coming out this year so we definitely want to renew Plone.org to like uh, show what we have, what's the latest version of Plone, what it can do, and uh, <clears throat> and show our product to the world. So that's the that's the main driver, and then the other one is to uh, when we get got rid of uh, Plone.com and and the marketing kind of stuff that's lacking from the current Plone.org. So we also want to add that uh, content there. <clears throat> Can you say a little bit more about what's different about Plone 6, that it's such a departure that it's important to showcase it? Yeah, uh, I will show. So uh, we actually have two versions of Plone 6, uh, the classic version, which is kind of like Plone 5 with steroids, with the, with the same user interface and same kind of stuff. Uh, uh, plus some some features, but uh, the default uh, user interface for Plone Six is uh, is this and is uh, called Volto, and 
and technology wise it's a totally different beast so it's built on react it's a uh, easier to develop than than python just python based websites uh, it's really really fast to use and it's uh, basically built from ground up to be this really easy to use really really, really fast and and easy to develop content management system so you can think of volto as being clone react so it's got a essentially a headless back end talking through a rest api to a react front end that uh, obviously, since there are a lot of React developers out there, it makes mm. for lots of opportunities for creating custom front ends using standard, very standard technologies. Yeah, React. that's true. And and we already have like a, tons of sites that uh, already use uh, Plone 6 technologies and this new front end. There are huge university sites like from Osaka University. There are european union uh, sites for large user base there are german uh, technology sites and italian uh, municipalities or something like that and so that technology is already in use and yeah. now we want to bring that into blonde.org blonde too yeah and the plan is to make a react based front end for plone.org as opposed to sticking with the classic front end that we've had for all this time since the react one is what's really new and exciting um yeah. so so that will give us a lot of flexibility in how we present the content rather than the you know kind of standard here's how it looks out of the box and here's how it will plone.org will therefore look like what it is out of the box. Well, out of the box is now very, very flexible with the tiles that mm. you can move around or, or blocks that you can move around at will and at such. So um, should we talk now about the plan for the renewal or did you want to say a little bit more about Plone 6 in general and the, and the Volto UI? Mm. Maybe, I, I think we can talk about the plan and get to the UI back later, so yeah. Okay. okay. So this uh, uh, this plan for Plon.org renewal was like presented in the previous Plon conference and, and, and uh, here are some stuff that we needed to go through and we all, what we already have done so far, but this is a major renewal. So from content, from, from the design, we still wanted to migrate the old stuff since uh, there's content that's been there for 20 years. And we kind of want to also show the world that we can keep the content in Plone that's created years ago, still uh, usable years after. So so that's that's one thing, but also to actually renew the site to like serve the community and, and users better and to um, make it easier for new Plone users to get into. And about the plan, how to do it, uh, we decided to organize sprints, which is the one way how open source communities work. But we have these uh, two days, three days, uh, weekends, uh, something like that, when we gather together and, and do uh, development remotely and talk about this stuff and uh, plan this stuff and design this stuff work towards content so this kind of thing was done yeah you want to talk a little bit about uh how the the upgrade in place versus uh dump and reload um is now the right time to talk about that or are you going to talk about that in a minute um yeah i i, I can mention it so so the migration part in the previous version it was done differently right it was a, uh, it was dump and load, but uh, but this time we made it make it in place. So uh, there are already uh, like thanks to huge work for from Philip and friends uh, a full migration of the current Plone.org to the uh, new Plone Six version. So we can do it like how we want to do it. And just to but, clarify, yeah. the yeah. when we said that the the 2016 uh, refresh, whatever was a dump and mm -hmm. load, we mean literally 
the old site sat over here and then we mm. dumped selective bits of content and loaded them into a brand new plone site. Uh, yeah. We took most things, like if you browse plone.org, you will find, um, you can browse by year, news items by year, and all the way back to 2002, mm -hmm. um, we still have that content. And a lot yeah. of the site is still, still there. But we did eliminate some of the more arcane things. Um, we shed a few things. But what's different this time, although the new upgrade mechanism is based on a JSON export and re-import, it is kind of, it comes with clone. Uh, at least I think it will. It's collective.export import, right? I, it might still be a, an add-on, but, uh, but it's a community blessed add-on way of uh, upgrading a clone site. So you don't have to, um, do that upgrade in place kind of dance that one used to do. And that makes sense because in the, in the case of export and then re-import, you can export content that was in a classic style front end using tiny MCE as the editor, et cetera, et cetera. And re uh, of more tailored to be able to use with the react, react front end, different way of putting yeah. together the front end. Did, did I say that yeah. right? Is that, is that, did I summarize that correctly? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good summary. And, and the important thing is that uh, since the user interface changes and the technology changes between Flown 5 and Flown 6 and the new uh, front end, uh, the migration still works so that uh, it uh, takes the old content from the previous technology and moves it to the new content as a usable tiles, which are some of the building blocks of each page, these tiles. So. Yeah, it's a just to point book. out what's on the screen now. Rico Pekka has just found one of the very oldest news items on <laughs> yeah. the, the, the announcement of the Plone One. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's still one there, released. So, yeah, <laughs> it's too great. I love it. Yep, there are there are thoughts from Alan and and uh, Limi and all sorts of fun things in the in the archives there. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think that the it's it's very nice these export import tools that um, rather than having to do a lot of custom work to make the transition from uh, the classic to the uh, React front end, we have the set of mm. tools that'll make that a lot easier. You know, obviously there's all if you've got custom content types and a highly customized site, there's always going to be custom things to do. But uh, hopefully those tools will make it easier for most people. Yeah. Um, so what else should we talk about progress? Um, what is, let's see, did you want to, what's, what's on this slide that you wanted to talk yeah, about? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe talk about what we want to like show on the new page. Oh, sure. so, yeah. so, uh, already last year, we kind of have some, we have done part of the job by going through the old content and, uh, and removing some unnecessary stuff and, and that kind of stuff but uh, when we thought about the new site there are some things that we want to highlight which is blown six of course and how to actually get blown and how to get it running and use it and uh, one thing definitely to highlight is this community that we are on uh, it's it's amazing and and how to get involved so that kind of stuff so uh, to highlight the clone for new users, uh, to make it easy to developers to get started with it, and then to highlight the uh, different sides of the community, which is a really big bonus for, for the software. So that kind of stuff. And also about the target audiences. So previously and currently the clone.org is aimed for the developers, but <clears throat> we definitely want to like uh, uh, show this to new audiences also to end users and decision makers and people like that. And, and thirdly, the new developers from, from maybe different uh, communities. Now that we use React, we can like uh, show this to React developers and then to Python developers and so on. And yeah, 
oh, here we have blown six stuff. And definitely, if you uh, look at the previous blown conference presentations or this World Blown Day presentations, you will get a lot of blown six stuff and and like good good information from there. But one of the like leading ideas of the site removal was to use blown out of the box as much as we want, can and uh, like to like we did years ago uh, the current uh, plon.org is maybe a bit too much uh, like uh, customized from the out of the box experience so there are like customized views and customized stuff and it's uh, it's uh, harder for content editors to uh, change some of these these elements but the new site should be so that the content editors have the power to change layouts and uh, and change the way they want to show the content there and yeah so just to remind people that these slides that uh Rick is breezing through hopping through from one to the other yeah. come from his presentation at the last clone conference uh, about yeah. this project. So if you want to see that whole presentation, you can Google for the Plone channel. And I think it's uh, Plone CMS is the name of the channel on uh, YouTube. Mm. And we have uh, playlists for each of the um, each of the Plone conferences. So you can find Rick Opeka's full yeah. presentation there. Yeah. Uh, I could actually, now that, <laughs> now that we get back to it, Maybe show Plone 6 a little bit, how it works. So okay. maybe let's use a couple of minutes for that. So here we have this public Plone 6 demo site. Uh, and I can easily log in there. And you can see the user interface here. So it's really uh, minimal. There's the pen icon. You can edit the page. There's the uh, folder icon where you can see the contents, how the site is structured. And then there's the plus icon for you to add content. So it's really, really simple for content editors. And it's also fast. It's uh, like this and that. It, it's, it's really fast. And, and each uh, section of the page, we call this blocks. So page can contain many blocks. They can be text blocks and they can be video blocks. and they can be custom made blocks and if i if i maybe i could add a new page here here we go new page and then i can add some text here and it's this easy and and then there's uh, there are these different blocks that i can use and these are the out of the box uh, uh, box blocks that we have, but there are already tens or even hundreds of uh, add-ons that uh, give more more features to the users. And maybe like doing some kind of a grid layout is really really simple. Three columns, two columns, uh, and one column and so you can easily like lay out the content and then add images and add texts and add video video and, and stuff like that as opposed to so, having yeah. a very customized home page which plone plone.org currently has which is rather hard mm. to add <laughs> yeah. now there are of course classic plone does have a tile-based or block-based editor in the mosaic add-on mm. but yeah this is yeah. This is React. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's a really a really short demo of of a basic Plone six. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit more bells and whistles on the Plone org since that's our plan. Great. So, do you want to talk about progress now? What's what's been happening? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So there's this news item and. <clears throat> And as the plan stated, we wanted to have monthly sprints. And so we have been having those monthly sprints, December, January, February, 
March uh, uh, and and next is on May. And and during these couple of four or five sprints and the sprint on the conference, there's been lots and lots of uh, progress already. So we definitely have thought about the content and navigation structure uh, and basically thought about content and how the front page would look, how the main sections would look, look how the navigation would look and what there would be. And then one of the major things is the migration from Plon 5 to Plon 6. Definitely a huge bonus for Plon.org and the for, for whole Plon user base, since now you can update your older sites to the new ones. Uh, then uh, actually we had help for the visual design. Uh, initially, we just uh, thought that we just use Plon 6 out of the box as it is, but uh, uh, thanks to the great community, we got help and uh, there are some great designers that we could use. So we're going to actually have a, a slightly updated visual design for the new site. Uh, it doesn't uh, like totally change the way it's shown, but it's still uh, recognizable as Plon 6, but it's uh, still like, it has more features and more, things that we can use on the new site. Uh, uh, we have worked on translations uh, on the default page contents on add-ons. There's also been lots of work on Plon 6 documentation, which is really, really good for developers and new users. And of course, um, all the time uh, people are developing Plon 6, uh, the core features, the new front end, uh, different kinds of new blocks and, and installation scripts and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy how the community has uh, helped us with this, this effort. Excellent. Um, Want to show us a little bit more about those designs that uh, we've been getting help with? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And this might be a, bit much, but uh, let me show this uh, huge design visual map here. So, so thanks to a couple of uh, Italian companies, Red Turtle and, uh, and Giallo Cabalcano, I don't know how to pronounce it, but, but they're great. Cabalco. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and the people working there, uh, this is much more that we ever hoped for. So so they have done lots of work on the content design on the structure design uh, on the way we should uh, like communicate the most important things to the community so through this huge canvas of ideas and examples and and things that we can use when we start building the new site uh, uh, there's already everything in place so when we start the content work and when we have the staging site uh, online, which is going to be next month, uh, and on, and we get our hands on it, we can just take it take it from here and use these ideas, use these structures, and work on the content. So that's that's a massive bonus. But uh, uh, yeah, in so addition to that, is, some of this is wireframes yeah. and discussions about about information architecture. And I think at the bottom yeah. there are some actual, uh, there's some actual mock-ups, design mock-ups. Yeah. By the way, yeah. anyone yeah. who is really interested in this aspect of the Plone.org and the design, uh, just contact the Plone marketing team and we can get yeah. you access to this to look at it in more depth and leave your own comments. Yeah. If I shortly highlight some of the ideas here quickly, uh, this new site is going to look really, really great. And and one important thing that uh, the community has done is uh, lots of new uh, front end uh, block features. So as I quickly uh, showed some of the blocks that we have in the core, there will be lots of new uh, feed, uh, new blocks on the core in the future just because we want these uh, features to be in plon.org. So uh, this uh, 
whole plant.org effort drives the uh, drives the product forward and vice yeah, versa. Awesome. So so Red Turtle and Jalo Cobalt are inventing a few new um, tiles for this project and they'll will of course be open source add-ons well available to add-ons first and then often these add-ons get at, will be get added will be added to core. Yeah. That that's true. And and we have a this uh, GitHub uh, repository with the new blonde.org uh, already using the new design, the new blocks and and new structures. So it's already there for us to use. Oh, awesome. And, and this I'm includes really the old the old plone.org content types. We of course do have a few custom content types on plone.org. Mm -hmm. For example, around our releases, all the detail information about releases, all the detail. Actually, I'm not even sure we do have that, but we definitely have a custom content type for our security patches yeah. with uh, detailed information about the security patches. And I think we also have uh, some custom content around our sponsorships. Uh, yeah. So, so that's uh, that, those are moving forward. Um, yeah. Along with this definitely. Project. Um, yeah, so, shall we talk about how people can help? <laughs> yeah, and, and already we love uh, your help. <laughs> yeah, we love your help, and, and we love you for doing it. So, thanks yeah, to everyone thank who has already like committed and and helped and and done any any work related to Clone Six and Bond.org. This is a massive community effort and. If you want to join, the easiest way is to probably join our Discord channel where we chat about these things, where we meet when we have these um, sprints. And the next sprint is going to be May 19th and to 20th. So next month after we get this um, World Blown Day organizing done and we're going to have a, another uh, org sprint then. Yeah, and awesome. And just for people who aren't familiar with the the Plone Discord channels, this has been a mode of communication that replaced IRC some little time ago. Um, you, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the community.plone.org, our discussion site. You can go there and find more information about the Discord site. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. And uh, anyway, you can always contact the Plone marketing team. team about the site renewal or any plone related stuff so definitely looking forward to that all right yeah. well great thanks for the walk through overview trip through time look into the future um yeah, yeah. and thank you again to everybody who's helped with the effort and to anyone who thinks they will help in the future so yeah all right that's it thank you sally and thank you, Rebecca. Thank you all. <laughs> See you around. <laughs> Bye. Bye.